I'm Dana K. White. I'm the author of Decluttering at the Speed of Life, and today I am sharing with you a one hour better. We are working in her guest room slash home office. So we are really gonna focus on the actual function that she needs from that space. Okay, this is a demonstration of what it looks like to go through the no mess decluttering process. I am guiding her through this process. If you want someone to guide you through the process, I have coaches, decluttering coaches who are trained and certified by me in my no mess decluttering process. You can find out if there's one near you at declutteringcoaches.com. Those are all my coaches there. And if there's not one who's nearby who can come to your house, most of them also do virtual coaching. Okay, I hope you enjoy this one hour better. Krista, I'm gonna set the yes. timer for an hour. And there we go, start throwing away trash. So when you say trash, like here's a question, and I know what you're gonna say about this because I've listened to okay. you. Ask me. So like this is a bag of other bags. So in New Jersey, we have a bag ban now. You have to take your own bags to the grocery store. You don't get bags at the store. You have to bring all your own bags. Okay. It's a nice one. You know, it's got like the strings. But I'm assuming okay. there's a point where you have like enough of them, right? Okay. What I'm hearing you say is, I don't know if this is trash or not. So skip it for now. And we're going to get to that later. Okay. The, the trash step is literally about obvious trash that you don't have to analyze. You don't have to think about. It's literally just actual trash. So what are you finding that's trash? I'm not sure if I have obvious trash or more trash that will, um, stuff will end up in the trash. Okay. Well, just look, even okay. if you don't find any, just look and see if there's any obvious trash at this point, because the other thing that that does is it gives you a purpose and a reason to look, okay. which is a big, a big key to getting started. So tell me about the function of this room while you're doing that. Okay, so it is my office most days. It's also a guest room. So my nephews like to stay over a lot, obviously. I'd have to throw all this somewhere for them to stay over. Take care of that today. Yeah, we'll get it figured yeah. out. Usually it just means like, okay, I'll just throw it all in the closet, which also probably needs help. My computer setup is over here. You probably can't okay. see it off the screen, but that's over here. So I work from home probably two, three days a week. Do you do like Zoom calls in this space or? I or do, I do. So I would like, of course, a better background. So you're, you really just want it to be a pretty background and a guest room. This is probably trash, right? Cause I don't know what it is. <laughs> me. I'm never going to argue with somebody saying something's trash. Okay. I think that was most of the obvious trash. Let's go to easy stuff. Anything that has a home somewhere else, it's just somehow ended up in this space. Cause you know, that's what happens when we have spaces with random stuff. You mean like this, the day I decided to fold laundry in here while I was working. I mean, that's, that's easy stuff, right? So let's get that stuff folded and put away. That doesn't go in here. Yeah. And then I just started using it as a closet. So I was like, oh, I think those pants are in the other room. Are you moving on to other stuff now? Because I wanted to point out that that laundry that sometimes can feel like it's pointless to actually do, right? Like that's procrastinate clutter. Yeah. It took you less than 45 seconds. I I know. <laughs> I'm pointing that out a lot today with different people. Cause I'm like, it's just such a reality check. So anything else easy that has a home and you just have to take it there. Don't buy these Christmas bags. Those have a home somewhere else. So you're, that's good. That's they good. Do. I like how you're getting more than one thing too and taking it. I won't tell you that I was looking for this to use yesterday, but now that I look at it, like it's really not that great a shape. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's a real issue with gift bags for sure. All right. Any duh donations? Anything that just obviously needs to be donated, you're not sure why you still have it. These are Easter stickers that I was recently looking for for my cards. Did you put it in the place where you looked for it first? So the thing is, things should be in this room. Yeah. But it's just like, I don't ever know where to put them. Okay, then let's let's talk through that. So, you know, our next, our, our declutter, our next step is the decluttering questions, which is if you needed this item, where would I look for it first? We need to take this room out of the answer bank because even though, yes, it's in this room, because that's where you've been stopping, things have just ended up scattered in the room and that's yes. not what you want. So the bed is not a place to look for something first. Okay. Now, right now, that's where you look for things because that's where everything ends up. Right. 
but what you want is for the bed to stay clear. And so with each item, especially as you're having a random item and you're like, where would I look for this first? And you say, oh, that room, remind yourself it has to have a real home within that room. As you come, like, as you came across those stickers and you're like, well, I would look for them in this room. Okay. Then let's ask the question standing inside this room, where would you look first for those stickers? So they're supposed to be in the filing cabinet right here. They're supposed to be in here. And did you put them in there? I'm putting it in there now. See, I still did a bad thing because I just threw them on the desk. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> but they're supposed to be in here in the sticker folder. Okay. And these from Christmas that have been sitting on my desk because I am apparently at least literally too lazy to put them here. <laughs> no, listen, we're not going to call it lazy because it's just a difference in how your brain works. Okay. We're, we're just going to say that's why it's important for people like me, because I'm going to say us here, right. You know, <laughs> randomly sets things down to be like, okay, I'm going to have this focus time to do this. And then I'm going to try, I'm going to try five minutes of focus time. Like maybe that's something that you do at the end of your work day. You're like, okay, it's the end of my work day, or it's a, a break time or something in the middle of the day, any random time. When you think of it, I'm going to take five minutes to put things away within this room, like actually put it away because I have the natural personality to set something down, which is what I have that same personality. So I have the five minute pickup habit or task or whatever, um, to combat that. Okay. So instead of feeling like, oh, I, you know, I don't know why I do, don't do this or whatever. Let's just find a way to do it. And that's what this time is too, of us doing this. So let's pick up item by item in this room and let's ask ourselves the decluttering questions or ask you, because it doesn't matter where I would look for it first, right? If I save this whole box for this cord or this little label printer. So where I haven't used yet, that's supposed to help me be organized. But where would you look first? If you needed a label printer, where would you look for a label printer first? So I, I would look for it right here because like here's the printer. And so I have the paper here and I have the labels for it. And for okay. some reason, I felt compelled to save this whole box just okay. for the cord instead of putting it in the. So you the... put it now where you would look for it first? Yes. Okay, perfect. I got Let's it in there. Next thing. Smart bulbs. Where would you look for, if you needed smart bulbs, where would you look for them first? So all of the bulbs are supposed to be, good question if they are, are supposed to be in the hallway closet by the door. Go put it there now. Are supposed to be. Well, but that's where you would go looking for a, a light yes. bulb. Probably donate. So my nephew talked me into buying this at the dollar store. because It is May already. If you're willing to donate. Let's go ahead. <laughs> I am. I am. More bins for organizing that are clear. Okay. Clearly in use. <laughs> if you needed clear organizing bins, where would you look for them first? So I feel like this goes with that conversation of like just having things to organize and then you're organizing the things to organize. So I have things in the other room. I've started to like collect them all together, like the storage graveyard, I'm kind of calling it because it has all the empty bins and things that are supposed to help you organize. Can you take me there with you? To there? I can. <laughs> so let's Let's take those those there now and let's go look at that space and say, and, and deal with them. The thing is we all have that. And that that is how we work through all of this is we go, if I needed empty storage bins, where would I look for them first? And then I take them there now and I realize, oh wait, I've already got a ton of empty storage bins. Do I like these well enough to get rid of some other ones or not? So they're all empty, just sitting here waiting until I've organized all of my rooms to figure out what I actually need. If this room was the way I wanted it to be, which was not having stuff on the bed, mm -hmm. where would I look first for empty storage bins? The basement. Can you take me there? So that's where we're going to put it. Now, is there a chance we're going to run back down here in the next 20 minutes and get those for something? Yes. But if we don't, which there's also a really good chance we're not going to, they're in their home. Okay. That makes sense. And technically those other box, those other bins that were also on that bed need to come to the same spot too. And now anytime you need a bin, you go straight to the spot, you've got them. But as you find more bins and you bring them here, then you embrace the reality that I can't keep them all. And it kind of st starts to sort out, do I want these cool ones or do I actually like the ones with lids? And then, you know, it, it that just naturally sorts itself out when we give it a defined actual space. So I'm really bad when I get presents because I know I don't really need them. 
and I'm like, oh, I don't really need presents, and I just throw them on the bed. But I feel bad, right, getting rid of this because it was a present. If you needed a Valentine's spatula, <laughs> where would you look for it first? So I would, here's what I would do. I would put it in a tote with the Valentine decorations. Then I may or may not feel like decorating for Valentine's Day so that I may or may not use it. And then I'd be going through the box like two years from now and be like, oh, I should use this. I'll just leave it in the kitchen. And then I won't use it in the kitchen because I'll be like, that's the Valentine's Day spatula. It's okay to donate it. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you here, here's the thing. I don't decorate for any holidays except Christmas. And I don't do that because of any kind of feelings or whatever. It is literally just because that's my clutter threshold. I can't handle the consistent decorating and undecorating and all that kind of stuff. And so I've just given it up and I've said, it's okay. And yeah. I don't now I have used a Christmas spatula in July because I liked the spatula and I was willing to get rid of an old one in order to keep that one. So if you're willing to do that and just make it part of your regular spatulas, great. If not, it's okay to donate it. And then you don't have to say, I, it's not that you don't appreciate the gift. It's not that you don't think it's an adorable spatula. You just don't, it doesn't work with your lifestyle. Yeah. You know? And like, it's, it's just, it's above my thing to actually, I don't actually get stuff out for Valentine's. I don't switch out spatulas for Valentine's. It's just not me. So I think it's really cool, but it's just not something that I do. Therefore it needs, you know, to go to someone who will take advantage of it and use it. You still can't. And do I it? also got this that says, I love you. I have buttloads to do. Where would you look first for that? So I've been throwing them in a basket in the, um, in the closet, all the notepads. I feel like I have enough notepads for all of eternity. If you've got all that you need, it is not a matter of not appreciating it and not thinking it's funny and hilarious and all that. It's a matter of my notepad thing is full. Maybe I'll put this one in there and then I'll make a conscious effort to get rid of one I wouldn't use. Okay, do that. Yeah, that's great. Because this one's cuter, I think, than some of the other ones. These are ID holders for work. If you needed an ID holder for work, where would you look for it first? I don't know. I think that's how they ended up in this particular. So, so it's not a matter of knowing. Okay. Okay, because that would have been easy. Yeah. We're literally establishing the home by asking ourselves this question. So it is, it is hypothetical at this point. Okay. If they've never had a home. So if I needed an ID chain for work, where would I look for it first? I feel like it should be in here because this is where like okay. my home office. So in this room, if I needed, if I was standing in this room and I needed my ID chain for work, what's the first drawer that I would open or a cabinet I would open or whatever? Where would I reach first? Hmm. Assuming I was going to look in 10 different places. What's the <laughs> first place? I mean, really though, that's what we're talking about. So like, what's the first place where I would look? I feel like I'd probably look in my bookshelf somewhere. Of your bookshelf. Where in your bookshelf would you look first? Don't think too hard. Um, Standing there looking at your bookshelf. I know it's in here somewhere. What's the first thing you would upturn or look inside of or whatever? That? Yes, because this has my blue light glasses on it. Okay. And my extra pair of glasses. And then that's where its new home is. We have 21 minutes left. Okay. I I can see in my vision, the top of your bed. And I want to finish that so that the okay. bed is clear. And I know you've done a lot of stuff that's down there on the floor. I want to clear the top of that bed by the time okay. we're, so let's get that stuff done. So I also got a cricket because I want to make my own cards. Okay. Where would you look first for your cricket? So I have it in the drawer down here. And then my friend got me a bunch of vinyl for, uh -huh. for Christmas. So I'm going to put that in here. Okay. So there's room for it in there? Yeah. Good. This is too many headphones for my work computer. So where would you look for them first? Here on my desk, not over there. But would you look for all of those or would you only ultimately look for one? So I would only look for the one pair. I don't know where I would look for this pair. Are those not ones that you use for work? Not usually because the other ones have a wire. I know I'm showing my age probably. Um, and so they're like... <laughs> <laughs> they're they're foolproof the bluetooth ones aren't as easy i feel like i end up just using them for like 
my phone if I'm listening to music or my um, Kindle or whatever. Okay, so when you use your phone to listen to music or an audiobook or something, where do you look for those first? In the bedroom. Okay, go take them there now. I don't know how that happens. A lot of things that don't go in this room. Because once it becomes a random, then your brain is like, I don't know, stick it there. I don't know, stick it there. And then it ends up being piles. Do, do you have, or does this make sense to you? Like when you buy presents to just like keep on hand, if you need a present for somebody. Yes. And it needs to have a designated gift spot. Okay. Either a bin or a shelf could just be a shelf in your closet. Okay. And it's where you would look for it first. And then you let that decide how many gifts you can buy ahead. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I feel so, like I, then I should find a place for them here. Cause like the gift bags and the wrapping are here. And right now I feel like I keep them in that room with like the Christmas stuff. And it's like it'd be better here because this is where the gift bags and wrapping all year are. But where would you look for them first? Because that's where they need to live. Mm. Right now in there. Okay. Right now. As you get more to where like this closet is cleared out and it's a brand new space, that would be different. But for now, I'll go with where you would look for it first. I might put these with the giftables. Is there anything else on this bed that would go to the giftable closet or giftable space? Yes. Okay, grab all of that and take it all with you. I got a graduation card last year. So it says 2022. So like, what should I do with this? Like, can you donate this? Should I just throw it out? You know, I would throw it out. And I'm pretty sure I've done the same thing. So I get it. Mm -hmm. This is probably a donation. I think this is a wallet that I won. I think I don't even know where it came from. I won't argue with you. The tub that you've been putting stuff, where would you look for that first? That Rubbermaid tub to your left? Oh, this was the one that I keep right here that has the special stuff in it. Go ahead and put that back because uh, we are one, we're 56 oh. seconds from being done. Okay. Okay, my timer went off. Oh, okay. We did pretty good. I think we did great. And I think you could finish this up pretty quickly, don't you think? Yes. Okay. And then you also did a lot on the floor as well. Yes. So tell me how you feel about what you were able to do in an hour. Was it more or less than you expected to do? Um, uh, More. Okay. And definitely, what? Definitely more, which I guess it's, it's funny because like I, when you mentioned the example of like how long it takes to do things, I think that's what happens. Like I come home from work and I'm like, it's going to take me all night. So like, forget it. I'm not going to do it. But yeah. like the fact that it looks this much better in an hour. Okay. Then maybe it would take me an hour and a half or two to fit it, like to have done it myself. Well, no, myself, it would have taken eight years. It's definitely doable in an hour. It yeah. just and makes everything it seems so overwhelming. Like it's going to be right one day in here. Well, and you don't have to think of it as I have to spend an hour either. It can literally be, I'm tired. I've been working all day. I don't feel like doing anything, but I'm just going to put a few things away. Yeah. And I'll stop when I feel like stopping so many times you can do that a few times, never feel like you've put out huge effort and it's actually gone. Changing that mindset of it has to be this huge amount of time to look what I did in an hour with nothing left to do. Like things went to their homes or they went in the trash or they went in the donate box. Okay. So there's nothing half done, right? Right. I think you made huge progress. You made real decisions about things. And I think a big key for you is to remember the bed is not an option. Yeah. That's not, that does not count as a place where I would look for it first because I want the bed to be clear. So this room is not the answer to the question. It's where within this room would I look for it first? That's a really good point. Cause I feel like that is my answer. I'm like, oh, it's in the gray room. Like, well, it could literally be anywhere <laughs> on the bed. It could be on the floor. It could be in a drawer. Too overwhelming to look for it. Thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. No, thank you. It's so much fun to get to see you one-on-one. -on -one. Well, tell me what you love about being a kindred spirit. I think I like the attitude of everybody. I feel like everybody is so nice and, and, you know, it's, it's funny. Like what is a disaster to me? And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's terrible. Everyone's like, just start, just start. And I think that's just the part that's like so hard. The starting is literally the hardest part. <laughs> I feel like everybody is, is so nice and, you know, with different cl clutter thresholds, very respectful. This has been fun and I appreciate you doing this and being willing to share with the world. And sure. No problem. I'm excited for you to have your room just be a place where they could just come in and plop down and you don't have to spend time working on it before they get there. Okay, wasn't that amazing? Isn't it amazing what you can do in one hour? I know I've had a couple people, 
not most people get it, right? But a couple people who are like, I wanna see it finished. And I'm like, that's actually not the point of what we're doing here. What we're doing here is we're doing a one hour better. What can you do in an hour? Something shifts in the brain of those of us who struggle with clutter when we realize, oh, I can make a real actual impact that is worth my time in one hour, even if that's all I can do. And if I follow this method, I can make an impact in five minutes or 10 minutes or half an hour or six hours or whatever. That's the power of the no mess progress and only progress method. Okay. Just want to remind you, if you would like a coach who will guide you through this process, go to declutteringcoaches.com. That is my website. That's where I train and certify coaches. Everyone listed there has been trained and certified in my method. Okay. You can find you a coach there. Also, if you would like to join our Patreon community, we call ourselves the Kindred Spirits. <laughs> if you would like to join our Patreon community, uh, then you can go to patreon.com slash a slob comes clean. All right. I will talk to y'all later.